All right, welcome back. Uh, okay, so this is, I guess, day two of being unemployed. Yep, you're seeing spots on my glasses. Uh, I'm seeing spots. Frick, it's raining out. Looking crappy out. What a day. So, that's all right. Perfect day to do the running around that we need to do. So, uh, first place we're going to go uh, is to the, well, in the States, I guess you call it the DMV. Here in Canada, we call it, in, uh, well, in Ontario, the MTO office, Ministry of Transportation of Ontario. And I'm off and on my way to go get, now I'm not sure what, it's it's your driver's report in the States, but in Canada, it's a little bit more, it's kind of like your DAC report, but we pay, it's about $17 for the two reports. I get one that's uh, my regular driver's report, license, if you will. And it shows what I've done in the last uh, three years uh, as far as uh, driving the car. Uh, and it, you know, shows uh, my license, what my uh, qualifications, if you will, my different uh, endorsements, uh, you know, that I need uh, corrective lenses, etc. And that's about it on that one. The other one is a CBOR report, uh, which is your commercial vehicle operator's report. And that shows everything, uh, you know, any bad inspections, uh, things like that. Um, you know, any violations that you've had while driving a semi truck. Now, the only thing is, it only shows these violations in Canada. It doesn't, the, the, the violations I get in the US don't show up there. But I haven't had any, but I'm just saying it's, it's a really cockeyed system because, you know, anyway, got to have these two things to, uh, uh, apply for a new job uh, most employers want it because it's the most current and it shows your record currently okay so that's where we're heading hey all right so we're back home and I forgot to mention uh, we uh, ended up also going to uh, the uh, local police department and getting a criminal search that's an absolute must your very first day uh, you want to do that. Okay, so the two things, very important to start off with, and I'm going to try to show you guys, but I can't really show you because it's got my uh, personal information on it, so I'll just show you here, oops, uh, it's the police uh, criminal search, I know it's not focusing very well here guys, so at any rate, uh, got that piece of paper here. And, um, it's, I'm not a criminal. Go figure. Well, you know, anyway. Okay, so the other two very important things now in the States, uh, it's, it's not your DAC, it's, you know, history of your driving record. Uh, in Canada, and I don't know what it is in other countries, um, but in Canada, or in Ontario, uh, there's two pieces of paper you have to get. Like I said, uh, you have to get your regular driver's license abstract, which... Try to show some of it here. Freaking light's too bright. Uh, anyway, it says I got zero demerit points down here. What it tells me is, uh, you know, my license type, uh, what classifications I have, the fact that I need uh, corrective lenses. It tells me when my medical due date is, blah, blah, blah. Things like that. And current demerit points zero, which means good. And then there's no record anything written here. You know, people that you've had seatbelt tickets, speeding tickets in your car, uh, you know, stuff like that. It'll appear here. And then the second one is, and I can't really show you it either because it's got, uh, uh, I'm just looking here. No, I can show you because there's nothing on it. There's, yeah, well, it's blank anyways, guys. So as you can see, it's the uh, commercial vehicle abstract. And it is blank, which means I've had no, no bad inspections, no uh, logbook violations, no, no nothing to do on the commercial vehicle. So very important to have these pieces of paper uh, prior to applying. So that's why you go through these steps before you even go out making phone calls, before you go job hunting, anything, before you talk to anyone. Get everything ready, okay? Um, I'm just trying to think, oh, something else you're going to want to do, okay, as a Canadian driver, uh, we have a fast, I have a fast card, okay, so that's for border crossing, some of you may not have it, 
Um, the one thing I didn't fax, but they may still need, is a copy of my um, uh, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, passport. But because I have the fast card, you don't really need to carry the passport with you. So you want to make a, uh, I'm just showing you real quick, blah, blah, blah. Copy of your, photocopy of your driver's license, front and back. Photocopy of the uh, fast card, front and back. Um, US drivers, uh, most other people that don't have the fast card, you know, photocopy of your passport. You know, get that all set and ready. So you have those pieces of paper ready before calling. Okay, guys. Uh, so it was a busy morning. I had to do run around. I ended up spending like 45 minutes at the police station. I can't believe how busy they were. It's raining out crappy. Any other time I've ever gone in there for, uh, you know, anything like this. Um, it's been dead. And then today it was busy. So lots of criminals out there today, I guess. I don't know. Uh, MTO office was uh, not busy at all. So. so we got that information. And now we're ready to go do the next step before calling. So we'll, we'll go through that here in a second. Hey guys, all right, so we're gonna get to this next part of it. Uh, one of the things you're gonna need is a pad of paper and a pen. So before you make any phone calls, what you're gonna wanna do is make yourself a little template of questions, all right? Now I just jotted down a few here. The questions can vary. They don't have to be what I have here, but uh, you have to figure out what kind of questions you wanna ask, but you should do this so that when you make the phone call, you're not going, um, 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 you want to ask a series of questions, okay? And it's basically what's important to you. So, you know, you're going to have the company name, but you're going to not fill, do these questions on every page for every company you call. Just have a basic template like this. And, uh, you know, some of the things you want might want to ask is, you know, what's the pay per mile, <clears throat> whether you're a, you know, new driver, experienced driver. Um, you know, what's the home time policies? Time, how, how much time out do you have to do? And how much t days off do you get? Uh, also within that home time, you have to ask, um, you know, with the primary lanes that they run. You know, a good question to, to ask is, you know, um, are they going to be able to get you home? Uh, you know, mention where you live. Ask them, do they have terminals there? Do they, is that in one of their lanes? Uh, do they frequent that area? I mean, if the the company you're calling is, you know, five, six hundred miles away and they never go there, then, you know, what's the point of working for them? Because you're never going to get home. All right. You know, uh, another question you can ask is average miles per week. Um, you know, what's their vacation policy? Uh, do they have a rider program? You know, should you want to take uh, your kids with you or your spouse with you, you know, during summer vacation or whatever? Um what kind of extra pay do they have? Like, uh, you know, uh, loading pay, unloading pay, depending whether you're flatbed or not, you know, tarping pay, chaining pay, strapping pay, um, you know, stop pay, you know, do they pay you per stop or, you know, additional stop pay, uh, things like that. Um, uh, what type of uh, bonuses, like, do they also have, uh, like, uh, fuel incentives? Do they have uh, paperwork bonuses, safety bonuses, etc., etc.? Then you want to also probably ask, what type of equipment are they running? Is it newer equipment? Is it older equipment? Uh, you know, what makes and models type thing? Um, you know, whether you smoke or don't smoke, do they have policies for, uh, you know, do they have trucks for non-smokers? Um, also, you want to ask what kind of logs are they doing? Are they doing paper logs or are they doing uh, maybe electronic logs? Uh, you know, what are your maintenance policies? You know, are you getting, uh, are they fixing stuff on the, the road? Do they have a shop? Do they, you know, avoid uh, maintenance on the road, etc.? Things like that. Now, that's just, just a couple items that I put down here. But, I mean, you can add to that, uh, to whatever suits your fancy. What you guys have to do is figure out what's important to you to start off with uh, you know home time amount of pay etc uh, another question how often do they pay do they pay you know once a month twice a month uh, weekly bi-weekly uh, stuff like that um, do they have any benefits health benefits you know stuff you know there's all kinds of things but you make yourself a list on a piece of paper then you have that list you tear it off or take the page and put it to the side then you start off a new page a blank one and what you do on the top is just you write the company you know write the company name uh, you know 
put their information, their phone number uh, that you're calling, etc. Leave a little space there when you when you do talk to recruiter. Get their name, okay? Make sure you get the name and write it down. So if there's any further correspondence, you don't look like a total idiot. Uh, you know, when you call and someone else answers, well, yeah, I was talking to a recruiter, but um, um, sounded like an older guy. But um, you know, you can ask for them by name, etc. Or you can refer to them as by name too, because it sounds a little bit more professional when you're talking to them. And then you have the two sheets side by side, so you can ask your questions off the one, and then on the blank one underneath the company name, write the answers, okay? And then, you know, if you call another company. So that way you're not writing all your questions down, you know, 10 or 15 times, depending on how many companies you call. Uh, so that's very, very important to have that set up before you call, okay? So, anyway, so recap for today. Driver's abstract, uh, you know, driver's record type thing, getting that. Uh, criminal search, getting that done. Um, another one also to make sure you have is your uh, medical papers, okay? I didn't say that earlier. Um, but anyway, yeah, get your, make sure you have a copy of your medical uh, report uh, showing that you've passed or whatever you got for the American's medical card. Canadians, uh, you know, the... the one that the government sends you every couple of years that you have to renew. Uh, always keep a copy of that. I made the bonehead, uh, well, I didn't. Well, I did. I uh, gave the uh, report for my wife to mail out when it was due there uh, at the beginning of this year. And I mentioned get a copy, but she was so busy she ended up forgetting. So it's not her fault because I should have done it myself, but I didn't. At any rate, so now I have to take a blank go back to the doctor and get them to refill it out for me so but that's one you have to have so uh, so so we did driver's abstracts whether it be one or two of them whatever it is you need uh, criminal search uh, medical report and your checklist these are the most important things to have before you make your phone call all right so anyways that's it for today's video uh, as far as that goes um, Alright guys, you just are, you guys are cracking me up. So anyways, first off, uh, thanks for everyone and all your support there. Uh, everyone's, uh, I know I shocked a few of you and some of you probably weren't expecting it. Uh, you know, I always try to stay positive no matter where I am, whether it's a good situation or not. I don't let anything, or try not to let anything really get me down. So that's why I know you guys in my videos have, didn't realize that uh, you know there were some issues but nothing negative I mean the company is still a, a decent company um, just like I said there was a difference of opinion on uh, certain things and I'll get into that another time and uh, you know ended up in a little bit of an argument and I just said enough's enough and that's why I quit when I did I was planning on switching companies more towards the end of the summer but it's happening a little earlier than I thought. So at any rate, a lot of you are guessing, 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 guessing down below. And uh, I told you, I'm not going to tell you right away. Um, you got to remember when you're going to guess, though, it's got to be a Canadian-based company uh, or a company with a Canadian terminal. Some of you are guessing some names of companies that, uh, while they may run in Canada, they're not based here. So we'll just leave it at that and uh, we'll keep you guessing. And uh, so, anyway, yeah, that's it for today's video. It is Tuesday. I'm just looking at the calendar. I don't even know what freaking day it is. June the 12th. Oh, my gosh. Go figure. Alrighty. So, it's day two of unemployment. 